Have you ever heard the tragedy of the Wonders of Life Pavilion? Party of Two right here. Welcome everybody to the Party of Two podcast. I am one of your hosts, the internet's Andrea Donica. You forget where you're from? You I, can't forget where you're from. I can't. I'm the internet's Mark Bianca. And today we are talking about the Wonders of Life Pavilion and what we would like to see done with this semi-abandoned former attraction that hosted multiple attractions at Epcot in Walt Disney World Orlando. And I was sort of standoffish about doing something about the Wonders of Life Pavilion because we there's so much right now in the community specifically about cranium command because of buzzy that i was like well everybody else is doing that why should we do it and then dumb me in the research everybody watches every possible thing that they can (laughs) about (laughs) the subject material that's up so yeah forget about it let's let's talk about the wonders of life pavilion (laughs) well and the other thing too is we've got d23 coming up this year And I have a very strong suspicion that we're actually going to hear about Imagineering planning on officially doing work with the space because Disney has actually been going out of its way to fully clean up the exterior, repainting it, removing mold. This is stuff that they really haven't been doing for years upon years. And additionally, not too long ago, there was a gaggle of Imagineers that were spotted going inside of the pavilion. So we know that something is happening, and we are also expecting a lot of news to be coming out about Epcot's revamp. We know about the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, we know about the Ratatouille ride that's coming, but... We know that it's not just these things. There's going to be so much more that's happening to get Epcot refreshed, looking brand new, and feel a little more in character with Disney IPs for the future. Well, even more so, similarly to the problem with Tomorrowland, Future World hasn't been very futuristic. Nope. So they've had to update that with Guardians with the restaurant with Spaceship Earth getting a bit of a redo and they're reworking the computer part because a lot has changed when it comes to computer science. And it I feel a little sad that some of the the kitschy stuff uh, was leaving and is already gone, but it's a it's a part of that placemaking thing. So we're not necessarily here to talk overall and give a history lesson about wonders of life there are other podcasters and and video people that can that have done those deep dives we're going to reference that history sure and we we might talk about some of those attractions in future episodes but that's not our focus today no today we are looking towards the future of epcot the future of future world (laughs) So, uh, we have a couple of different ideas for what we would like to see inside Wonders of Life, what what we would like to do. Mark and I are going to kind of go a little back and forth. Back in time. I'm going to start kind of slow and easy and work my way up to the the big e-ticket that I would like to see at Wonders of Life. But first and foremost, I find it very interesting that... In terms of all of this focus on health and activity, there was never some sort of a jungle gym play area type place inside of this pavilion. Now, I know what a lot of adults are thinking out there because, well, if you're listening to this, you have strong navigation skills uh, somewhat in terms of the internet. I think that it's really important to get the body moving that's one of the key things about health and personally as an adult i am constantly frustrated that i actually cannot go to some sort of an active jungle gym place and just have fun just swing around and how fun would it be if parents could actually do that with their kids not just have stuff that 
is built for small children, just built for toddlers. Something that families can do together, which goes back to Walt's original idea for everything that a Disney theme park should be. And I think that it would be really cool if they need to tie in an IP with this, is have Baymax kind of be your guide. And this would kind of be in the center of the entire pavilion. It would be health and wellness with Baymax. Not only would there be a jungle gym area, but you'd be able to take a series of different tests. Basic things like your blood pressure, but, you know, different interactive activities to see where you are. And then provide helpful tips on how to be the most healthy and happy that you can be. I think there's a couple of things that you can do there. Not just health and health, but wellness as well. And I can't believe I didn't even think about Baymax being a healthcare provider because it totally is. Um, but you've got the bright colors. You've got Honey Lemon with all of the science and you, you can go into individual chemical compounds and um, everybody, Wasabi, everybody. And so that's a good team to represent the health part of it. But I was thinking it just in terms of stuff to do. One of the popular things that has been springing up around the country these days have been these trampoline houses. And if you have a just a small little area where you can bounce around and you you put a gimmick on it, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, all of them have to be themed. But that's something that everybody can do. That's something that you sign a waiver for before you go in. Hmm. But it's a free experience and you get it gets your energy pumping on the other side of it. Can you imagine if they had the equivalent of like uh, tube hotels oh, and there man. was yeah. nap space in Epcot oh. where you could experience, they theme it to something futuristic to where it's like you're in a hyperbaric chamber or blah, 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 whatever. They futurize it up, but it's essentially just a nap tube. <laughs> like how metal would that be for Epcot? First of all, a little bit of a waste of money, but if people, if no. you, it, well, let me, let me say this. If people are there for a couple of days, people are like, we're not going to go on the nap thing because you can either energize by taking a nap or you can energize by getting salt on salt therapy rooms. Yeah, maybe. But at the same time, uh, what I was going to say was for people that are there for days, for like a week and a half, 10 days, whatever, by day eight or nine, them nap rooms are starting to look pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it can provide some health care for young, 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 young kids, freshens as I call them. <laughs> but yeah, if if that's sort of a surrounding area, I wonder if they would keep, in your vision, do they keep the carnival? No, 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 no. I, I am not a fan of the carnival theme. It just doesn't feel Disney to me. And I think that in order for everything to stay fresh, things need to feel a little more futuristic a little more clean if anything i i'd like to see dna motifs something that i always really loved about the pavilion was the dna structure statue that was out front i thought that was really cool i would like to see motifs like that for monkey bars and you know different things uh rock climbing would be absolutely rad Definitely be very colorful, but still feeling really fresh and new. Agreed. As long as the majority of the play area has that like soft, cushiony yeah. floor, 100%. I'm in. As a dude that walks around in sandals, being able to just take those off and squish about a bit <laughs> and help sort of like stretch out the feet. Even if, oh man, can you imagine if they just had like the giant styrofoam rolls where people can roll out and stretch out? Or what if, you know, a lot of this stuff has been, a lot of things that have come out have been chair aerobics, where if you're in an office job, the, a great way to help you sort of, um, a great way to stretch out is they give you stretches and this and that, things to do on your break, things to do like 10 minutes a day just to sort of keep your circulation going. But if they offer those for theme park goers, all right, you've been on your feet a lot, 
what can we do to to help you build those muscles for this? Mm. What can we do if you've been pushing on a stroller, carrying a kid, have a heavy backpack on? What what can we do to help strengthen that and and keep you going for another couple of days or hours or minutes, whatever? If if there were small little or oh man, just the there's a lot of stuff that can be offered. It just it goes back to what the Wonders of Life Pavilion was at the time, which they tried to do as much as possible with the hiring as few humans as they could. Yeah. There were three video presentations, and one of which was just the just the worst. <laughs> or no, I'm sorry. There were three three stage presentations, one of which was a stage with video screens, one was a movie, and one was the improv show. Yeah. And the improv show had the most people I can imagine than the attendance yeah. on most rides. But you take all of that space away, all of that sort of stuff away, and you actually put people in there. Or you make them robots, whatever. You do health robots or, or some, I don't know. There's a lot of There's a lot of options, but thinking realistically, it's stuff that has to be able to sit there with little to no human interaction where it's safe enough for people just to walk up and do it. Yeah. There's a lot of ideal situations that we could get from here, but there may just be a slap of a IP and that'll be that. Like, is it even going to be the Wonders of Life Pavilion by the time we get out on the other side of this? Well, I think that regardless, it should be about health. It doesn't need to have the Wonders of Life title per se, originally the pavilion was supposed to be called the health and life pavilion i believe mm -hmm. and this was something that the imagineers wanted to do from the get-go but no company wanted to sponsor it hmm. and it took forever to finally get metlife to sign on i also hope that disney doesn't try to find another sponsor for the pavilion because it just Anytime Disney goes into trying to find a sponsor, the moment that they pull out, just everything goes awry. Well, they they need to sign up knowing, like, we, we are responsible for taking care of this. The sponsorship... The, the, the sponsorship way of doing things is so over. Like, that was, that was literally a carryover from the World's Fair where the World's Fair would have brands sponsoring certain attractions, and then that was carried over to the theme parks, and then that was carried over to Epcot. But the second, got to hand it to him, the second Eisner introduced Star Tours to Disneyland, everything changed. Then IP, popular intellectual property, Pips, became what brought people in. And whether that's a popular topic or not, that's the truth. And... It, it may be for better or for worse, but if you if you attach an IP on there so kids can go, yeah, instead of parents bringing their kids in because parents will just do whatever to shut their kids up sometimes. True. true. I mean, that's true. Yeah. That's sort of the better way, and at least right now, because that at least provides a more consistent lifeblood for – the averages for, the, for Star Tours and Indiana Jones – are a lot better than the averages of any of the sponsored pavilions. Yeah. Because those tend to expire. And especially with Future World, Oof. oy. Yeah. So going with an IP, it's not what people want to hear, but it's probably the best thing to do. Yeah. And I think even more so than just Disney, there's another, there's a Marvel property that deals with shrinking down and entering various spaces. And... Re why not replace Body Wars with a Body Wars esque journey into the into someone's? Oh God, I like I didn't even think it all the way through until just now. You put Scott Lang and you put him in the the ship that he and the group took in Ant Man and the Wasp to find um uh to find Janet mm -hmm. and you you make a sixteen. Ver person version of that you pull in a back to the future and say hey we've made it bigger and better for no reason we <laughs> we did it because and 
you have to go you have to save tony stark from something Mm. so like there's something invading his body and so you have to shrink down go in and like maybe something with his arc reactor will know that got fixed but maybe something happens so that way you get scott lang and hank and uh, i'm sorry scott lang and tony stark talking to each other the entire time so it's just hilarious but it's ultimately (laughs) it's ultimately another star tours clone but it's it's still a journey into the human body Mm -hmm. and you're fighting i don't know microscopic aim bots or something like there's something there but i think an ant-man property could could do well in there so i was going to wait for my e-ticket until i'm just going stream of consciousness here fair enough um I want to move completely away from the motion simulators. Okay. Because just with what happened with the history of Body Wars versus Star Tours opening up in Orlando, I want to go more back to Imagineering semi-original idea, which was the incredible journey through the body. But instead... I wanted to do something a little more, a little more interactive. So imagine this still being a dark ride. Okay. But you are essentially arming white blood cells to help combat bacteria that has entered someone's body. And this could be something for scientific research. Maybe they're trying to help people get over colds faster. So they're doing some really exploratory science. And so you are you're going to be joining the body's natural white blood cells, but they've they've also manufactured them. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's going to be a shooter ride. So you're going to be going through the human body and chasing after the bacteria. Because it's really interesting for science, actually. The cells eat the bacteria. It's really wild to watch. With the shooters, you you would be slowing it down to try and stun it. Because, you know, you really need to attack this stuff. And then ultimately, at the end of the attraction, you would overcome the bacteria. And I just think that that would be really rad. And it would still be edutainment. But a lot of fun. It would be very similar. Uh, Andrea, I, I'm pretty sure you don't know about this franchise. Uh, there is a an anime manga franchise that's essentially Osmosis Jones. Oh, but I know not, Osmosis Jones. That is essentially Osmosis Jones, mm-hmm. but is an anime oh. called Cells at Work. Um, it is uh, an anthropomorphized version of Cells in the Human Body. And you follow a red blood cell and a neutrophil uh, throughout this person's body. Huh. And so it, it can fill, it can scratch that itch for people who are familiar with that show. It's It can be something completely different. Would you put any particular actors or actresses of the day in it? Absolutely. I, I think it's great to find contemporary entertainers to round out whatever cast that you have. Oh, and one other thing too, trackless ride system. Hmm. So you all go as groups of white blood cells together to do all of this in each and every room and uh, throughout the attraction. I think you could then leave the option to be separated, to be rejoined. Like some people can go through a certain ventricle or a certain uh, vessel. I'd love for people to be able to temporarily actually have control of manning their buggy their cell and then at a certain point you know when you need to progress to the next room then you know the the technology will take over and mobilize you a little bit but i think that that would be really fascinating could be fun uh you want it so you wanted to take over you want to do what it was originally supposed to be which is supposed to take up the majority of the pavilion instead of splitting it into two smaller attractions. I want this to be the big e-ticket attraction. So, but I also have another 
D to E ticket that I have on the docket as well. Why don't you go ahead and go into it? All right. So people have been talking about Inside Out coming to Epcot in some fashion. Some people have talked about it for the Imagination Pavilion, and I don't think that that's the right match. Imagination and the human brain are are two different things. Well, I mean, there is the section in the movie where you're in the imagination portion, but it's but a more it's a, a more particular thing. It's not uh, it. It doesn't deal with creativity necessarily. It's yeah. They presented it as like a movie studio. Then there was the abstract thought. There's a lot in there that could be used, but it's not strong enough. Yeah. What I would like to see is an in, in, in Inside Out attraction. And the really interesting thing, too, is Pete Docter, who created Inside Out, was also an original creator of Cranium Command. And that's that actually gave him inspiration to create Inside Out. I would like to take that idea and do a similar setup to what they're doing for Smuggler's Run for us, where you're basically going in small groups, you're going to be manning Riley's mind, and you're going to be assisting joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust, and basically give them recommendations on how to handle a date with Riley. And you would even, through the, through the queue, actually get to take a personality test to determine which of those characters you are best partnered with. That, that's an interesting choice. The, the only issue being the re, the use of that ride system several times throughout the property. Because there's mission space, then there's going to be smugglers run, and then there's going to be an, a, something else. Is, do you consider, is it going to be uh, an attraction, a ride, or just sort of a an extended walkthrough sort of a thing? It's going to be an attraction. So... Similar to how Back to the Future and The Simpsons, you have that little waiting area. So there's going to be five people waiting before they're going to go. That's when they're going to take the personality test. Then they're going to go into the next room. And that's going to be your headquarters to view into all of the characters' headquarters looking out for Riley. Mm -hmm. And then you're each going to have your own set of panels to select recommendations on how to react to the situation. Okay. Okay. And it would create for a a different experience every single time. And I think it would just be a lot of fun. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I know Inside Out has been the, the biggest rumor when it comes to what's going to be coming to Wonders of Life. And I think, I don't know if an actual ride would be the thing. That's that's the one thing. Is I don't know if, unless you're on, it's a dark ride. And it's the story of Inside Out. It's the story of Riley. That's one thing. But making it more personalized to each person's cranium headquarters would be, yeah, I don't I don't know how they would use it, but I know that they will try to use it. Yeah. And I mean, I had thought a little bit about, oh, what if everyone could create their own joy or sadness avatar, personalize it to them. And then you would go in and then just be manning whatever human's brain. But then you miss out on tying in the vocal talent that you have from the film. And I think that that would be a little bit of a bummer as a result. Well, not necessarily. In the other in the other voices, in the other heads, it's a lot of the same people just doing voices. So they're... But they were a little different. They sure. weren't exactly the same. Sure, but... Like it, it would be specific. To, so you're looking for 
kids being able to recognize that that's joy, that's sadness, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. If they keep the, I think the only other thing that they could they could make it work for is if they do a new Cranium Command show that is just a reskin with uh, Riley and Inside Out, and it's all five of the characters and they're animatronic. Um, or, but if they fig- they do like a universal thing where the the chairs move or. Or I suppose if they do like a uh, uh, Honey, I Shrink the Audience thing where the chairs move, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But that's across the way at the Imagination Pavilion. Pavilion. The other thing, too, is you have to figure out a reason for the audience to be there. Oh, that, that's, that's easy. Well, not necessarily. Because they, of why... Okay, work. sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, like I, in... In dealing with stories and storytelling, you can make up whatever bloody reason you want and make it work within reason. Like, that's what the Star Wars books and legends and extended universe have been doing for years, months. Is it, How can we get this character in? Well, let's shoehorn them. We'll figure this out, blah, 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 blah. It's possible. It's doable. Whether anybody is willing to do it or not is a different thing. Mm. But I, I don't. I, I agree with you in the sense that I don't think that the carnival thing should survive, but because you can just have places where these attractions, these various sideshows back in carnival land can live because Inside Out can be something that you can utilize for mental health and uh, wellness and things of more of more messaging of telling kids that it's okay to feel sad it's okay for this it's okay for that but i know they they want that e-ticket and they would they would slap just as easily slap an ip onto it to make it work and i as much as i love your idea for the white blood cell ride i don't know if they wouldn't slap ant-man on there because they have the technology from hong kong like a lot of people are and, and Shanghai. A lot of people are seeing the stuff from Shanghai and, and Hong Kong and going, okay, that's going to be an Epcot. That's going to be an Epcot. That's going to be in Tomorrowland. And they're just going to reskin certain things and, and change it and move it. So it, I, I have no idea what they're planning. Yeah. <laughs> really don't. And D23 seems like the first place where we're going to see anything. Well, the, the great thing for them, too, is because the exterior of the pavilion is still standing and there they could do whatever the heck they want inside and we're not going to be privy to it the only thing that we'd be able to see would be if they're if they empty out all of the storage that they've been using it for for all of the pavilions if all of that space that urban explorers have gone through and seen if all of that space that is being currently occupied by kiosks and this and that if all of that gets dumped out and the show buildings, the the stuff that's right hanging off the end from the, the giant golden paneled building starts to get knocked down. That's when people will start to be like, oh, something's happening. Well, and last I saw, it seems that they've actually put up the, uh, the, the heavy wood barriers to cover up what's happening behind. Really? So... I mean, especially, too, with the urban explorers creating a safety hazard and security hazard. And what happened with Buzzy, they needed to step things up a little bit in terms of keeping that area secure. But I think the fact that they've gone out of their way instead of just having a dinky little rope across saying that it's closed... And taking it one step further is also an indicator that they are doing something in there. Yeah. I hope <laughs> it's I hope they keep that DNA, that double helix thing. Yeah, me too. I just found there is a Twitter account called Wonders of Life Fanbase. And it's just got a lot of old random shots in here. But I, I was hoping to see some like updated things but it's a lot of frontiers yeah it's it's really weird speaking random speaking of frontiers i do think that there still should be an area with 
frontiers and advances in medicine, maybe even call it medical marvels or something like that, where you are updated with advances in health, biological technology. Mm -hmm. And if they do a sponsorship for that, at the very least, I think that that would be cool. Partner, I, I don't know. I don't know what company is taking care of Disney employees on their health insurance, but that might be something easy to drop in. That's also something that may not last forever. That's true. Like, well, health- that's why MetLife ended, because there was a dispute over coverage for the employees. Yeah. But you never know. And, and I think that that's really cool, too. Maybe maybe even a, a little gloss over, you know, what it takes to be a doctor. What it takes to take care of the human body. You can even do something where it's uh, like there's been a lot of people using superheroes or... Um, Star Wars or the various things to sort of live uh, fantasy with like their new prosthetic limbs. Maybe it's a mm-hmm. way of showing how prosthetic limb technology or any sort of neural implants, things of that nature. It, it's, I mean, it's essentially still horizons or frontiers, um, but they actually keep up with it. Yeah. So something that can be a little bit more sustainable, but you can show how you can compare it to, uh, like this medicine can make you feel like like is gives is what happens when this happens to Black Panther or when this happens to Luke Skywalker or Ray or whatever. Like you can use those IPs so that you can have kids standing next to them and feeling empowered in the same way. Oh yeah. Well, I was just thinking too. How cool would it be to have some sort of a fitness exercise with? captain america or with luke skywalker or or ray i think that would be a lot of fun train uh, training to be a superhero area or something like that and just encouraging good fitness practices so that you can have yeah and and you can become a superhero through that yeah yeah i like that i like that a lot i'm i sort of walked into this hoping that you would take the reins because I had no idea what the flippin' heck I was going to talk about with this thing, <laughs> and and you're helping me out because you're you're bringing in all of these heavy hitters, and I'm just sort of adding up adding on to it. <laughs> oh, that's fine too. So, um, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about when it came to the wonders of life? Because we didn't really talk about food. Well, yeah, food. Everyone talks about these wonder waffles, and apparently, and waffles. well, yeah, and I mean they they were shaped like little floral petals. I mean, it looks really cute. Apparently, you could put whatever toppings you wanted on it, and people want that back. I mean, that sounds really cool to me. Sure, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of waffles and and toppings. Definitely healthier food. Or as healthy as you can get from a theme park standpoint would be ideal. But well, it, nothing nothing too standard. And the thing, too, is that they can't do exactly what you're seeing, per se, at the Living with the Land Pavilion. Because I know that they try to do healthier food over there as well. Maybe more more creative ways of eating healthy. A smoothie hmm. place would be nice. Well, then we get something like schmoozies, but then there's also like I, I something that I talked about in the Tomorrowland show of having 3D printed food, but having like um, what's it what's it called like gastro the the the, the there's something where people like cook chemic on a chemical level. Oh yeah, to yeah. make stuff, and I just totally the name is escaping me, but. Something like that. Gastrology? Yeah. Because, yeah, I don't know. I I don't I can't remember. remember. Uh, Correct us using uh, at party of two (laughs) pod on Twitter. It's been a while since I've watched Top Chef and shows of that nature. You loved folks that used to do that stuff. I I really did. But because it's interesting and it's science. But something like that where they're going on a molecular level to to create what you need. 
and and make it sort of fu- theme it futuristically something i don't know space ranger goop i don't know <laughs> and um <laughs> you, you go from there something like that and and make it so that the kids will have to have it and you and you go from there the, oh, that yeah. that's what i can see is you go super futuristic but at the same time looking at pandora that menu didn't stay sustainable at all Oh. No, because the they it used to offer like food from the Navi and yeah. they don't anymore. They, they don't? They changed the menu to make it a lot it's not like burgers and fries, but it's still like healthier options, mm-hmm. but it's not as like cool oh. <laughs> to say to say the <laughs> least. So it's gotta be something that they can sustain, something that they can regulate, something that they can replicate, and not something that they, that takes forever to make yeah. something that they can just kind of goop out put it in a thing and serve it and, or barely any assembly put it in keep that qsl lifestyle going that sounds so unappetizing to me well that's what a lot of the food is, is they, <laughs> they goop it out they goop it out and then they put it they put it in some sort of a bowl or some sort of a some sort of a bread some sort of a a a, a bowl you know all sorts of a cup, all sorts of stuff. They only goop it out. Whole wheat, only brown or only brown goop. <laughs> brown rice. OBG, only brown goop. Oh gosh, that's yeah, us. Or do, like, don't. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that they can do, but it just has to be sustainable. Be good if they had like a, a strictly vegan eatery. I don't think that. At least to my knowledge, I don't think Disney has ever made any sort of restaurant or quick service place like that. I think that would be good. Or something like with the Impossible Burger and oh yeah, things like that. Where no, it's now that I would now that I would love to see. And if not there, then definitely living with the land. That would be something sustainable stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see the Impossible Burger make its way all around the world. Hmm. All around the world, Impossible's <laughs> coming for me. Yeah, something like that. But um, I want fresh juice. Okay. Yeah. Like right now? I mean, always. All right, but... then, then we should probably get on this ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we go, uh, we want you to let us know about what you want to see from the Wonders of Life Pavilion on Twitter, at Party of Two Pod, and at our individual Twitters. You can check me out at Dole Whip Drea on Twitter and on Instagram. And you can find me at Mark Budonica on Twitter, Instagram, and all sorts of places. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Party of Two Podcast. We'll see you on the next ride. <laughs>